lot to prove with that the last pick pugna oh, uh, hell pick yes. into uh, against some heroes that that are able to deal with the pugna you're gonna have people setting up getting in the face of him the raw the jump from the lion mm. and you know decrepify is, is not necessarily going to save target sure it's going to stop the the lifestealer beating down on them uh, but lots of magical damage the vp have to still work through uh potential decrepify saves that no one would normally want to look for when he's playing pugna yeah indeed and, oh it's a tough i i want to see no one just do incredibly well in this lane yeah it's just so hard against Beastmaster. How do you really zone him out? He's going through a bottle and soul ring build. He's already down. There's a good start. Well, that's that's that things here. Getting the first blood. I See if they can get saved as well. Save. Managed to, manage to stop the regen there from, from Dream. But now, first blood with the tri lane set up. Wow. Oh, yeah. They, they just started with um, Snake and Trees. Yeah. And then he TP's back up top. That's a really cool move. I dig it. Um, but it sucks as DM to skill Q, um, trying to get the first bolt on Wisp. It's really weird laning without the ability to trade right clicks effectively. No poison sting. Can't push the lane too well either. Now see how much pressure he can put on to Dream Desire in this laning setup. And as it is, Nightfall getting very good CS on the first few waves, whereas Never down bottom tree have a, a little bit of a slower start. Having to deal with the pressure here from uh, the two of them as the end hits the level two and then we'll manage to step up that ability to push back dream zaya so find the support top king slayer and snake coach keeping one another busy away from the lane any sort of pressure like this is going to make the nightfall's life still pretty happy she's not going to struggle too much only against dark to life alone mid lane no one he's doing as you wanted to see him do so far crushing the matchup 14 for three against the eight for one and pugna he got a bunch of early denies which was very helpful and pugna probably one of the best heroes with the new changes to bottle um you almost all you <laughs> you get every archer cs let's be real like you just spam nukes fully get a bottle you push the wave you get the water rune you get the bounty runes just a really nice hero on the patch. We saw it. Uh, I've seen Thompson played a bunch in pubs recently. We saw it yesterday, uh, played by Atlantic in a couple of games. Yeah, had a great time. One of those games we ended like 10 0 12 on the mid Pugna. So, a hero that we have seen have some ridiculous performances here on this patch. Yep. And that's the way that uh, Gambit would win this game. You can get ahead early. I, I'm pessimistic about their lack of ability to deal with magic immunity but you, know, you look at this vp lineup they need a lot of time to come online they need items life stealers doesn't really have any anti-push and uh, this combination very strong see them try and get aggressive here onto king slayer quite enough to take him down though uh, nightfall she ever coming in after life a bit of a punch on the way out bottom lane seeing a second kill here for as monaco gambit two times down this bottom and they, they have managed to yeah. get Dream involved in some very early action. I'm really shocked that uh, save went for no points in hacks. One of the better one-point abilities. You know, 2.5 seconds of CC. Someone can't stop the tag team. So go for DM here. I've got him trapped in the shots. DM. He's looking pretty dead. Save shots to help out with a stun, but this bottom lane, it is. I is crumbling completely here for VP. Already losing three heroes down here in the first four minutes of play. Yeah. I think they, they had a misunderstanding how this lane would be played. You go the mana drain, because the idea is you're going to just play the attrition game. Well, Io Tusk is a great counter in that sense, because they, as you can see, just go for kills. That's how they're going to play this lane. And VP, they don't have the time to whittle away at the health pools enough. And now that they've died a couple of times, it gets even harder. Yeah, sure, Wisp is low, but Tusk goes to base. He'll bring him regen, or rather, no, just bring it on the courier. That is a very fast Hama Iron, yeah, though. That is. Oh, hell yeah. Once he's got that out, yeah, that's the Plus 5 HP regen should keep him in a state that it's just going to be very hard to ever sort of bring him down with his damage over time. And so uh, that we have to get a nice little buff in that last patch. Uh, additional point of armor in the helm of Iron Will. So very tanky Iron now. He's played it, you know, but I still have to play very careful down it despite the kills, as we see. No, he's not farming anywhere near to the same rate that, that Nightfall is up top. Now, Nightfall 32 and 15 on that safe lane live in comparison to the 15 and 7 that Dream's getting out of bottom. There's a downside. I mean, top lane Sand King, you just you can't do anything against the life Do they have a sentry? Yeah, they do. Will they catch? Yes, they will. 
even even further ahead he goes and this is going to be the big problem you know we've talked about armlet another hero or item rather that was changed uh buffed significantly in my view which is i'm lying another it just doesn't stop down here this like the kills just keep rolling in for as monaco gambit i mean what, what do you do about this bottom lane issue vp there's got to be a point where you, you're just dying too much down there. Eh, I mean, they're slowing down the CS at least, but I do agree. They can be a bit more conservative. But at the end of the day, that's what Iotusk does, right? You tether the overcharge, so much lockdown, and then the double attacks with the tag team. But Lifeskiller, yeah. Oh, he's going for the Maelstrom, not the Armlet build. I take that back. I, oh, I'm shocked. You almost always see the Armlet nowadays. It's just so good. Only 40 health drain instead of 50. Huge timing spike. What does that, what does that sort of say to you? Is that you in this match, so you got a bit of extra punch in the fight, so you sort of just speed up your farming. Save. Oh. Oh, I'm not quite sure, to be honest. Um, it's not a bad item by any means. It certainly increases no, your farming speed. I know. You know, when I think of Life Stealer's ideal itemization nowadays, I just don't think Maelstrom is in the kit. Yeah, if you're gonna go that route, I would rather him, if you know, if you're trying to accelerate, I would rather see um, a Midas even, if you want to go that route. There's no illusions to clear. The magic damage is, is cool, I guess. You know, someone gets defensive decrypt and then all of a sudden there's a Maelstrom proc. That, that's cool. Toss behind. Hello. So just sitting next to save there, the two of them holding hands on the top of the stairs. They, they will back off from one another. <laughs> afterlife. Thought he might be sent to the afterlife, but Dyer's instead he'll just go uh, in a quick circle. Not too much that Kingslayer can do about him making this play. And so he'll hold the creep wave. And oh, no. he wants that to go. Oh, he's losing a couple of creeps. I'll step him past him, but he'll manage to get the, the majority of the wave. Middle lane. Now looking to, to use that strength that he built up in the bottom lane elsewhere, Bash. The good levels, he heads towards the mid. Counter play is going to be there from VP Roars out. They turn towards no one. They even bring in Nightfall as well to take down no one and take down Immersion as well. As VP and not letting an AS Monaco Gambit get away with that move around the mid. That was so well set up. Excellent stomp combination. That's the, the hard part about playing heroes like SK Pugna. You know, they're really relying on channeling spells, Pugna specifically. And if you want that kill, you know, they had to commit where they were. Great stomp, immediate roar actually pushes away the tusk with the ink swell on, on him. So there was no stun. Radiance and then a double TP and boom. Two kills. That's great. Great turnaround. They're gonna look to come straight back and, and look for some more action despite the fact that they failed the first time round. This time it's a little easier. Kingslayer Ooh. caught in the river. Like a lot of magical damage there between the the three of them. Yeah, we forgot as well. This is the OG specials, right? The the Grimstroke Pugna. This is a pretty damn good combination. If you throw out the silence and the decrypt, there's no way you can attack it to kill the phantom off of yourself. And later on in the game, the double decrypt, double life drain. It's a lot of damage. Double Dagon. Probably the best part. People still make sure not to, to lose this tier, tier one tower quite yet. Try again. Despite you know, no one's best efforts to, to really pressure it with the blast, VP coming in to, to push back the wave each and every time so they can hold on to it as long as possible. So, lovely stacks here. Mm -hmm. Waiting to be cleaned up. Top lane save. Quite able to get the catch there onto Afterlife. Afterlife still has a burrow strike and a TP available. Got to be careful about a potential stomp. Uh, he's gonna go for the TP out for the stomp. It's there just in time. Kingslayer is it. able to put a stop to his escape save again, not quite having the reach Dyer's to top top grab him with the stun. Uh, he's got another bar strike up there after so he could continue to make them work for it. Uh, but actually, he holds on a little. Okay, he was waiting to lose him right here. Either way, probably dead. And indeed, he does go down. Knife will get the kill back over in the mid lane. Whilst that's all going on up top, a bit of a distraction. There's him, Monaco Gambit, will manage to push down the tower and take down GPK as well. I'll quote uh, one of my favorite players, Moon Meander. Uh, Sometimes, as an offlaner, you gotta know you've gotta die. And that bad players playing offlane don't die, yet accept death. That was well done by Afterlife. He makes that whole move happen. Three heroes distracted by him, a bunch of missed spells. In the meantime, that means his allies can not just get the enemy mid-hero, that's also playing for a huge time in the eggs, but they kill the tower. 
Yeah, big objectives here taken by uh, Monaco Gambit. Keeping their half the map pretty, you know, very safe. All of their tier one still up right now. As VP not quite in a position to, to start to, to get aggressive and to push themselves. Nightfall. Step over here, but the silence comboed with the decrypt. There's no counter wow. play. There's no counter there as they take him down. Moving in four more with Life Drain onto Kingslayer. Dream's gonna join as well as he relocates over. They take down Slave. We're gonna see the turn here from GPK as he has to use the raw to hold back no one. Uh, but he's gonna keep running GPK. They may still catch him. They've got the decrepify. And we'll see Dream, of course, have to return as the relocate comes to an end. VP trying to see if they can punish here. It's one go Gambit for this. They've got the stomp set up onto no one, but they're all relatively low here, the three of them, so they're a little scared about how close they stand. Right. In fact, GPK, we end up coming to close. This one is not quite going to touch him, though. So GPK will live. Immersion slowed down by the poison sting of the Plague Wards. And, uh, he'll look for the maybe oh the little juke. Oh As, uh, he's actually gonna get away. He's actually not gonna be caught here. Kingslayer's not able to find him. And immersion's able to make it back Good. safely. Bounty yeah. rune as well on the way out. That was a that was a little sci-fi B movie juke out there, you know. Runs into the closed room, say, oh the attic. Dyer's top tower is But we're staying here, yeah, this exact combo as you said that teams like OG are picking yeah. this duo for and it ruins heroes you know, that normally a life stealer would feel that he's gonna have the ability to get out most of these situations but as soon as that bugs on top of him yeah. he's not got a rage and unlikely to really have the items to de ever deal with the phantoms embrace so this is this combo unless he's got someone around him yeah. to remove it it's gonna kill him every time it's a little deceiving too I believe the silence used to affect you like as it got on top of you whereas now in the moment it's cast you're silenced and uh, the pug the damage output is just nuts uh, with, with the Wait, but reason, that's not true. Did they buff it? Is that how they buffed it? I'm like 97% sure. Th there's no way the fans are... Is it in it? <laughs> Surely it's still in the bug yet. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, here's the fight down bottom. Gonna get no one turned upon. Big old coming out from DM as he's trying to turn Sudeiko. Will fall down surely as Nightfall's running at them. It's two down. Nightfall seeing if you get a further cleanup as the big ult that was out there from DM has caused them all to have to scatter on Ace Monaco Gambit and it's found the setup for them to get kills this time around as VP they'll take down three maybe even four as they're running into the jungle to try and find immersion hiding in the trees Kingslayer and Nightfall they'll surround him he's got a snowball it's only gonna buy him a little bit of time though as, as soon as it comes to an end Nightfall claims another VP strike back hard I needed that fight this time they actually get on top of these squishy backliners and you might be right Owen they might have changed it the other way around but then I would question, how did Nightfall get silenced in the first place? Well, he was, uh, you know, yeah, because he, he was right next to him, Seneca. But as you said, as a lifestyle, if you're getting that close to a Grimstroke, yeah. you got to be ready for that bug to come out. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, another reason I would have preferred to see the armlet, though, because he only dies there because he's dick and Maelstrom. You know, there's no bracers. There's no actual stat game. Now he's got the belt of strength. Uh, he'll be going Sanj, but just, uh, yeah, I mean, it helps with stacks, as we'll see him take one here. We're quite curious. He will scale. Still a relatively even Radiant game. Big timing scary. is, of course, going to be that Beastmaster Ags. We've seen that do some pretty nasty work over the short time it's been available in the game. And are you sort of a, a believer in the build enough for it to, to have the priority of being played from the mid lane rather than the off lane? You feel that it is it's strong enough to, to get that position to, mm. to do it? I... It remains to be seen. I'm having a tough time. It reminds me of the... I guess Alchemist is a bad comparison, but it's similar when people started pooling Ags. And you're like, okay, is this really that good? Sometimes it looks terrible, sometimes it looks unfair. Uh, it's really all about the timing you get it and how these fights will go. I will say against this lineup, you know, they're going to have to deal with your Lifestealer and your Venomancer. So theoretically, if DM can just pose a distraction, then 10 seconds of Axe throwing is all you might need just to win a team fight with ease. Very Trinket is quite nice as well, a little bit of spell damage. Mana cost reduction. Two top lane save. I push this lane out on his own. Easy setup there for Afterlife for the first the TPs to come in and get the kill. Back over to miss an acre. Get taken out. Both teams have a support. It's a little too far forward. An interesting point as well. It's not super effective in this game, but uh I've been following some stats. I think Knoxville's been posting. Um, his whole theory is that after a new patch, if you look at ability draft win rates based on 
um, abilities picked, mm -hmm. you can learn a little bit about what is and is not broken. Come on, top. Well, fourth place. Yeah. How, how did you know, JJ? Yeah. Fourth place right now in win rate percentages is Netherward. Another jump, and uh, they might be able to catch more out of this. We'll, we'll see Nightfall already heading away. He's out of this half of the map. Means that he heads straight towards the top. As Nightfall continues to, to keep on par with Dreams Farm. Both carries very even with the progress so far. As we'll have to see, you know, so far Dream having a brilliant game. 4-0-3 on the carry IO. You know, so far, it, it seems like that the nerfs haven't held him back. Still having just as good of a game as the carry IO. Yep. As an axe too. Now this is where things get spooky. Really tough for uh, you to play a blink sanking against a Venomancer. It's why we see Virtus Pro last pick it. You, you want to be this blink initiator with the Grim Stroke Ink Swell, but if a ward's up, specifically placed on a high ground, you get clicked. Suddenly that whole combination is is complete, and there's no real catch outside of that unless they want to blow a snowball to, to bring somebody forwards. Go straight away around the mid. Hey, it's Monocle Gambit looking to continue to keep the pressure on immersion. Go on, so he finds a chance to, to initiate, but VP there, the planet cautious. Aghanim's now done on GPK, so he'll have that, that ramping up damage ready to go in the fight and zero Fire's cooldown. Io's done as well. Could be our first big clash. I think the, the spell damage, again, still very much in the favor of Ace Monocle Gambit. They are so strong, feeling themselves. Their abilities, plenty of damage to take down effectively any core. And Virtus Pro need a bit more time to come online, I would say. It's the jump. Fine save. They're gonna look to start things off the line, but immediately Nightfall's gonna jump out. They're gonna head straight over off the puck, and the finger comes out. They burst. No one immediately in the start of the action. As Ace Monocle Gambit will manage to turn take down two, but they'll lose two more themselves. Both supports and no one out of the game. No one actually buying back, using that buyback, but not actually able to, to really get back in it. So a, a buyback that VP are able to a, a retreat and make sure they don't lose anyone else to Pugna buyback in the fight. The bright side, it was a pretty cheap buyback, but I'm shocked that he used it. Well, maybe they can still find some of those hard to like. He's getting the lead in. Kingslayer, though, he's found the stop. Nightfall is looking for a target, but he doesn't want to commit him. With the dream coming back over. Keeping no one healed up. He won't push any further. DM's gonna get back in the game. He's ready to head in at half to life. We'll still find the catch. He's able to close in upon Kingslayer, gets the jump. I'm really shocked they gave that to him. I mean, with the buyback, you gotta figure they're gonna keep hunting you. Virtus Pro, you're at the mercy of your big cooldowns. Finger, Roar, Earth Splitter, Venalalty. They're all on cooldown. Yeah, thank you, JJ. And they even use the infect. Like, literally all alts down. You know, you don't have that problem. As, as this Radiant side. No, You're ready so to go. Sand King stun, decrep, blast, drain. That's going to be a hero kill. You got to be cautious. That Netherward also doing some serious work. Poor save with that stun finger combo. Basically killed himself. Fight. I see what the move is here. Is S Monaco Gambit. I'll have to be a little careful with no one's positioning with his buyback expended. Because Roshan would be nice, but not really, really the best lineup for taking it. So Got to focus on getting those kills. VP. They're already also ready for some action. Smoke comes out. GPK cleaning out the mid. See if save can find that attack. blink jump. Of course, the, the, the big Radiant catch will be no one. If they can kill no one's Pugna, this is going to heavily slow down his game. Hunting, they are. This is gonna be easier said than done. Oh, oh there it is here, they can jump Dream. Got the damage to take him out. No one's trying to keep him protected with the crep vine, the life drain. He's healing Dream up. Nightfall's still gonna charge him, but Dream's able to tether over towards no one, and the rest of Ass Monaco Gambit are making their way over. Here they come. It's immersion. I'm gonna catch up with the shard jump for after that game. Well, they'll go straight in onto Nightfall. Can they bring down the life drain in time? He's getting more of the Phantom to Grace on him. He's trying to take it off. He will manage to do so. As Nightfall will live. A turn taken down the two of them stays, ready to jump back in onto no one. No one drops down the nether ward. Dream will manage to take no one out there. Oh, they gotta buy back. Somebody, they gotta get back here. Yeah, they're gonna look to fight. You don't wanna ditch your IO carry. There's four heroes of VP surrounding and ready and waiting for Dream to return. See so if they're gonna help him out here. Dream's gonna get caught up on stop. No one trying to keep it alive with defense. The defense fight for the players comes out for the 
the finger dream getting low he'll turn over towards gpk but he can't quite finish the beastmaster off the heel oh does continue God. to keep dream alive the axe is damaged dream's got to be careful another axe oh, is going to do it there as gpk finds the snipe takes down the carry io and gpk wasn't there but back at ti8 in vancouver we did axe throwing at the the pre-event party we did we did Few of the players are quite good. Apparently, GPK, you know, were he in the scene, might have been in that final round. That's a good job we weren't there. He'd be hitting us all. GPK, we saw the damage done that last fight as well. Over, over 4K damage there done by GPK's Beastmaster. Getting the angles and getting the opportunities to just continue to, to layer those axes out of them. Yeah, it's still anybody's game, but you can see uh, a big part of this game is no one. I mean, he played that flight near, flight near Fall, so it still wasn't enough. On mid. They're able to get the opening here. Nice jump from Afterlife into the Phantoms in Can they keep him chased? And they can with the inch one of the punch up. They bring him down as Nightfall pushing forward incredibly aggressively. Uh, he felt invincible. Uh, he, he wasn't. No, not at all. He's got to be way more cautious. Cannot afford to be playing so loose. Might even set up for the Roche, but with ET checking the pit, it's going to be tough. To oh, they're going to smoke and look for another kill whilst Night falls down. So if there's Monaco Gamma can get the jump, they found GPK. Shards out as well, they're trapping him in. There's no escape for GPK as there's Monaco Gamma gets straight on top of the Beastmaster and take down the mid. Two cores down on VP. It's getting right over. Right, you got to play more cautious. We talked about it. VP, you've got late game, you've got team fight. You need those BKBs. Well, now what? Gonna give it. Did you want this? And now they're going to keep on it. VP's trying to step up with just the three of them. There's Monaco Gamma next to the full line. towards the jungle as if they had a, 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 a score to settle, but they, they had no fight in them. It was the three of them against five with A.S. Michael Gambit. And A.S. Michael Gambit, they did have the high ground. This Roche isn't even like that huge of a deal. There's no shard. It's the first one. Yeah, it's tough, but you're in no shape to fight. I, I just really curious what they're doing. They have to respect the same thing factor. If you're going to make this sort of movement, DM has got to set up in advance, prevent the blink dagger. Ward's on the high ground. Prevent uh, this sort of jump initiation. Double point triggers mean that it's the game that you close the gap so easily. Give it away the Roche. And the Radiant Star. The Roche is going to die no matter what. Now you're going to six kills. Now you're going to fight again? Oh, very ambitious. DD on the Wisp. They get the fuck now to start the fight for this to work. See if they can find the wall. Ward's already down. Save. Oh, God. It's going in very deep here. Do they have vision around it? I, I, I don't think they hit saves down. They will manage to kill Afterlife. A Dream comes over the hill. Actually, doesn't matter. GPK is able to find a motion with the Axis. So it, it does does work out. A risky play. This time, works out for VP. They get the two kills. Only losing saves for that effort. I mean, poor, poor save, man. He's like, as soon as the Pugna Ward goes down, by blinking forwards, like, that's a brave soul. He knows he's dead. Because, realistically, he's going to cast his spells. He's going to die, but he's the delivery system, you know? He's working on behalf of the alien, the life stealer inside of him that bursts out. Takes out two heroes. But man, we'll see. A VP, they're closing in on the BKBs. It's still really anybody's game. It's been quite entertaining. What is it, 24, 17, a lot of 24 minutes in? 2K lead still at the moment yeah. for AS Monaco Gambit. GPK just finished his BKB, though. Radiant That's huge. Button. He can actually enter fights now, run at no one's Pugna, potentially roar him, try and take him down. Surprised no one hasn't picked up a Dagon yet. With all the uh, burst damage potential. He went for the Rush Doctorine. The blink makes sense. Aeon Disc is next choice. Scotty for uh, for no one, or, uh, Nightfall. It's really nice. One of the best tools at limiting healing. And when you're playing against a Wisp Pugna, it's necessary. Because oh, yeah. otherwise, that hero is just going to get double healed. And we've seen it in those mid-game engagements. You're just not able to take them down. MVP. Try their luck at taking down the Tier 1 tower. Of course, we're here at 24 minutes in. And, and VP are yet to, to be able to take any objective from AS Monaco Gambit. Radiance bottom tower. We'll see this one go low. There's Monica Gambit. No Radiant interest in trying to protect this tier one. Next fight round, Dream's got a full BKB. So uh, again, the, the IO carry continuing to Radiant continue to perform here. On as Monica Gambit first picked again, I believe, right in the draft. And it's still looking as good as ever from Dream. That's what we call the the Jabay right there. 
That's how, right how they drew it up. Kill the lion. We'll spam all of our spells on his corpse. It's certainly going to work. And you can see, save, that's the smile of a man who knows. The job well done. Yeah, it better be. Too, too intimidating looking guy standing behind him like, well, you better not mess this up, boys. Here we go, down mid. Under the tier one's VP. Two minutes, Monaco Gambit can do to, to stop this. Looks like they're going to let it go. Dreams looking for some sort of angle from the side, but I'll let VP take these towers. And it's allowing Nightfall to, to really keep on back on track with Dream. Nightfall's farm still in a fantastic position. All things said and done, the gap between the teams very, very minimal. Mids pretty much in the same spot, carries as well. Even the offlane just had a very slight difference. It is close, and, and as you said, what, when you were coming into this game from the draft, you, you were still concerned about AS yeah. Monaco's Gambit's ability to, to take this late against yeah. VP's lineup. Closing the game. Although, I may just be continuing to underestimate Carry Wisp. You know, Sanj Kaya up likely a heart next. You know, maybe that's enough. Sure. Maybe Could be unkillable. the true carry, right? Top but top it doesn't get easier. Life Stealer will continue to get strong. He is doing percent based to damage on a max HP based percent damage with every attack. Age is up another two minutes. Is that 50 seconds? Yeah, yeah. final minute now. Any glasses. Program's only like 10 feet away. Make the most of it here. They'll take the tower. Mastiff's bar. Instantly out of this area, Nightfall. He's not going to take his chances anymore. He knows that they can kill him. They find that jump. Lovely little find here, the Paladins. Be able to, to amp up that life steal. Now with a full Scardy. Nightfall with all the tools to get in. Decrepified targets are still going to be a little bit of an issue for him at the moment, but if he can work around that comes the fight, they know Aegis is fading. Dream? Dream's gonna start the Oh, Afterlife, he's, right. he's up on the cliff. And Zephyrus Track, a little bit off the mark there. Still, things still work out as they get it onto DM, they bring down the Venno. Over to the side, though, Nightfall, as they, they found themselves on top of the Pokemon. They're trying their best to burst him down, they won't be able to do so here with the Earth, but as they take him out, Roar comes out from GPK onto Dream. Nightfall's able to continue to go to work, beating down the Io. As this time round, that the strengths are shown there between GPK and Nightfall. It's Life Stealer, Beastmaster, just a little too overwhelming for AS Monaco Gambit in the chaos of a 5v5. Oh, yeah. A huge, huge Earth Splitter coming out as well from Kingslayer. I mean, that was so much damage. He was also standing in melee range of the Pugna, so removing effectively all of his armor because, you know, no itemization defensively just yet. He has you know, just base armor, a blink, an Octarine, half an Aether Lens, but that's, or Aeon Disc, rather, but that's not enough to keep you alive. He gets basically three shot by that life stealer, and suddenly VP have blown this game a wide open. Exactly what we were concerned about. Yeah, because it, it is just definitely the case of you know if, the, if you lose that lead as AS Monaco Gambit this game, getting it back is uh, it's going to be so tough with the heroes that you have. Yep. That this life stealer is going to be be a huge problem. Nullifier next on the list for Nightfall. Once he's got that done, there's very little that, that they can do to stop him taking down whoever he focuses during a rage. Yep. And uh, it's not just that it's a life stealer, right? It's the fact that you also have ET Aura and Beastmaster Aura to deal with. So, incredible tools at maximizing your physical damage capabilities. I'm gonna grab some vision. And the delivery as well. Blink Lion, like this is the dream. 10 seconds on finger, they don't want to wait for it. Oh, that or just a better target. Oh, no. Oh. Gonna get the roar off onto Dream now. It's gonna go for the easy kill first. Takes down the touch. Now it's gonna head straight towards Dream. Dream's able to get the BKP off and easy way. The Soul Pine holding back the two of them. There's Dream. Only thinking about getting back in on this, but they are a man down. The immersion on the side lanes. Side lines so that they won't be able to get back in. VP. They get the kill, they get out. You can look for some of these easier objectives. Tier 1 tower still for the taking up top. Radiance top tower is under attack. And now all the towers that DP were not able to take suddenly start to fall like dominoes. And yeah, that gold gap was getting a little spooky. 
for the BDP fans in chat, but Radiance now you've collected the tier four. two bot after the tier one. Now you're getting more towers, probably just walk down the tier two. Radiance and suddenly you're at a point where attack. that strong initiation, much like Radiance we saw in the Liquid vs. Alliance series top yesterday, top. Grimstroke Sand King is great Go when you're able to kill people off that combination. You can't do that anymore. So now it's suddenly very odd. And the more time you give VP, the more vent awards go down, the harder it is to blink in. And you're Radiance so reliant on them top. as well. Three Sunday blinks top. on the team already. There's the jump path to life. He's only getting in there first down now for the try in the back. They've got the silence going on to him. Raw comes out for GP Kendo. They look to start to set up the turnaround as they won't be able to kill off the life steal. And Nightfall's able to survive long enough to get that rage up. And now VP, they turn towards the two of them. So by more course, and they back for now. But I say that, they're straight back in. The jump is there for State, delivering Nightfall straight to the front lines as there's four. Monaco Gambit, another fight just looking impossible at this stage. They're trying to make the Radiance same moves that they were getting away with earlier, attack. getting in on top of the life. But at this point, Nightfall, he's got the farm, he's got the items. They can't quite burst him. And if they don't take him down with that jump, the lineup from VP, it will turn and it will kill them all. It's looking to dive now towards the tier four. A buyback comes out from Afterlife, but he can't protect Dream as the IO falls. Afterlife looking to have a dieback situation here as he indeed will go down a second time. BP, they'll take the fight, they'll take the tier three, they'll take the rest, and at this, with this sort of momentum, they're, they're probably going to be taking the game soon as a turnaround looks very difficult for AS Monaco Gambit now. Oh yeah, you could do that when the life's still at 1200 health maybe 20 minutes ago, but that's a status resist from the Sanj, 3.5k HP as you can see on your screen. They got him close, but as you said, you don't kill Lifestealer, well, that's it, folks. Your entire combination is gone, you have no spells left, and suddenly VP's turnaround, the double alliance, and save has been on point, died a bunch, but pretty much been his job. And uh, any Tamor, you can see, with the BKB, GPK, he's running into the fray. He doesn't care about the Sandstorm, the FB, the Pugna Blast, what have you. He's there, tons of damage. And can't get in unless he's, he's got to be careful. I mean, Nightfall's just going to charge him down now with another fire. We'll respect that the soul bind again, making sure that there's not a chance for AS Monaco Gambit to set up some sort of combo onto the two of them. I respect the buybacks coming in as well. Uh, the, 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 the respawns coming in. That's their, their, their back off for now, VP. Roche is just about to spawn, so no panic. Yep, they're going to walk straight into the pit. The bird providing vision. Don't think you're really able to contest this as AS Monaco Gambit, but they can try. It's probably worth a try. Now we've just seen that they're struggling to take a fight. In which, you know, killing the, the live dealer once seems impossible. If he's going to have two lives, it's, it's going to be very hard. I believe also Nightfall did grab himself the time, so time. Roche XP is going to push him relatively close towards that level 25. Yeah, they even give it to him. Nice. Oh, he gets the shard too. Open wounds, it's back. It's back. That combo with another fire, you're going to struggle to run from this man. Save on the hunt once again. Leading the charge. Ready to deliver Nightfall straight into the action. Smoke right into the base. Love this move. So hard to predict it. They're playing safe, but somebody's going to have to push this wave eventually. Radiance middle attack. Oh, it's very hard, yeah, for various Monica Gambit to show their face. They give VP enough information for Save to find that jump. The fight's yeah, it's gonna be over as quickly as it starts. If they pop the A, I'm just gonna pop it though. And without any real hard save outside the snowball, which is for sure gonna be this target. What are you doing? This this Aegis lifestealer slowly taking down your buildings. Who's gonna make that jump a car? And again, Afterlife tries to come in with the power of the the range is out, and they're gonna turn and take down Afterlife, because he's gone for 70. Ibax still on cooldown after the last attempted defense there from S Monaco Gambit. Now GPK's in with the BKB, the ball, straight on the no one finger as well. No one goes down and buyback immediately, but they've lost immersion. He'll also have the buyback. Two buybacks coming out from S Monaco Gambit, but VP they've taken the tier three. Not for with the rage, he turns straight over more dream. Immersion comes in with the punch to hold him back. Dream still very tanky here, but Nightfall's continuing to go for it. Turns towards him 
rush him, but they will manage to bring him down the once in Nightfall. Using the ages underneath the tier board. Should be able to get back there. Rage is back up. And in fact, he's going to look at look to use it again, straight back in onto Immersion. And that's Immersion gone for good, and that's a dieback for that Tower Dream. He's suffering to, to deal with this amount of damage coming out now from VP, as they can bring down his, even the tankiest of IOs here. Radiant's middle Master. 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 Such a short cooldown. Nullifier effectively set up four kills. Got rid of the Sand King Yules, gets rid of the Decrep. Can't BKB as the Wisp in time, and the ET Spirit also paying huge dividends. DM, or rather, GBK and the Lion just way in the back, but dealing near pure damage with the magic abilities. Just the initiations every time for Dream and GPK. GPK and save. Sorry, I've been perfect. Every single time catching them, and there, there we go. I mean, VP, this game was a slow start, but at the end of the day, just part of the plan, right? You know, it's Monaco Gambit. They had a, a pretty hot showing at the beginning. They were getting these kills in the lanes, making moves in, in the early mid-game, but they were never quite...